Good, Good evening. evening. Welcome to Hong Kong Review 2013. In the political arena, Chief Executive Leung Chen Ying's popularity plummeted amid questionable policies and his top aides mired in controversy. In December, long-awaited constitutional reform proposals were unveiled. In the community, the jury is out on the effectiveness of drastic measures to cool the property market as prices remained high. Parents were beleaguered by shortages to baby milk powder and kindergarten places. 2013 was another year of protests. July 1st, dock workers, a foul-mouthed teacher and a free-to-wear TV license provoked people to take to the streets. After a four-year hiatus, the government announced in October it will grant two new free-to-air television licenses to iCable's Fantastic TV and PCCW's Hong Kong Television Entertainment, excluding the third applicant, HKTV. Its chairman, Ricky Wong, was stunned. He had to sack 320 staff and call the decision a black box operation. I wish the government can stand out and tell us what is happening. OK, what is my score? Of this, of this, of this process. Okay, what is the score of the others? Let me know my score. Leung Chen Ying insisted he had heeded the majority view in Exco and stressed approval of all applications is not guaranteed. This is the application system, and this is also a system uh, of um, the chief executive in council making the ultimate decision to process such an application. I was told that whoever fulfill all the financial and technical requirement, then we will be granted a license. Wong disclosed a top official had taken the initiative to ask him to apply for a license. The officer said she can't see any reason why we are not granted a license. For days after the licensing fiasco, HKTV staff, artists and their backers protested at government headquarters. They demanded the government explain why Hong Kong TV was rejected. Incensed at the government for ignoring public views, netizens responded en masse, with rallies organizers say attracted 120,000. It's not giving any respect to its citizens. People will not trust the government and also giving a very unfair example of how they rule the Hong Kong. We want to fight for the justice. We want to know the reason. Uh, why it's so secret. There are lots and lots of uh, doubts about how the government has come up with its final decision and the government has not been able to tell us why. Leung Chen Ying persistently cited Exco's confidentiality rule in not divulging his reasons to exclude HKTV. We are hoping to use the PNP power of the LegCo to force the government to provide these papers to us. In the end, the motion was defeated by no votes from functional constituencies. The government reiterated claims a consultant's reports said the market couldn't sustain five free-to-air TV stations. In fact, I think according to the report, four players is already quite stretching. But the consultant herself said this wasn't her conclusion. The government replied Exco scrutinized four consultants' reports, some of which had revised data and claimed it made a cautious decision. Just before Christmas, Ricky Wong came back with a vengeance, announcing plans to launch a mobile TV service next July. He'll rehire staff made redundant earlier and resume program production for three to five channels, including a 24-hour news channel. Since he'll buy the Spectrum, amounting to a telecommunication license from China Mobile, Wong believes it won't affect his continuing bid to get a free-to-air TV license. March, more than 100 dock workers stormed the Kwai Chung container terminal to strike and protest, demanding a 20% wage raise. In ensuing days, their numbers swelled to several hundred protesters. Many citizens joined them.
。喺痛楚之中，我都要行出嚟。街外人有大學生，有其他人嚟支持我。我係行內人，我冇可能唔再出聲噶啦。Hong Kong International Terminals, or HIT, refused to negotiate, saying the workers were hired by contractors. They are not our employees. HIT obtained a court injunction to ban unauthorized entry into its terminal. The workers continued their strike outside the docks. Days later, the court revised the injunction, allowing some workers into the terminal. Unionists regularly doled out to the strikers donated funds totaling eight million dollars. We are workers. We give every day five thousand dollars. When we talk about money, it's not about the problem with the workers. It's about the problem with the boss. A week into the strike, Labour and Welfare Secretary Matthew Cheung finally appeared to say he'll arrange negotiations. It's important for all parties to set aside preconditions. Really. Meet each other across the table and talk frankly, talk uh, pragmatically, so, so as to arrive at, at a consensus. Within eight days, the government organised three meetings, but the two sides were far from reconciled. Union representative talking about occupational health issue, also the pay rise issue, but the employers uh, didn't promise or didn't answer anything. After nearly a month of industrial action, one of the contractors closed its subcontracting business. Unionists extended their action with rallies at the Cheung Kong Center in Central. We believe that uh, staying here uh, will put more pleasure to, uh, to Li Ka Sheng and Victor Lee. It's Hutchison that should pay. You know, they are the one that really profit from the whole business. Hutchison, Honcho, Canning, Fock went on the attack. The union side is very, really un, you know, unrealistically stand firm. Do they want it, this to be a platform for other political aim? I don't know, but it could be. He really don't understand what is happening at the bottom. He is up there, up in the sky. We are out, down in hell. After four rounds of talks, dock strikers accepted a 9.8% pay rise offer from five contractors, ending the 40-day industrial action. It's a new beginning of the terminal, so we will, uh, to watching the terminal and the subcontractors, we will continue to fight. An online video went viral of school teacher Alpai Slam, displeased with police handling of protesters, swearing at officers. It sparked heated debate. In August, a group rallied in Hong Kong to support the police and criticize Alpai's behavior. Concomitantly, many groups of individuals came out to support Alpai's. The dispute escalated into a melee. Some questioned Long Chen Ying about the affair at one of his public forums. Long ordered the education secretary to submit a report to him. The chief executive demanding a report on such a case. Is totally inappropriate and uncalled for. He has already sent the parents and the students to the school to get them to go. Why do you need to continue to harass them? Is it right? The school said Alpais will be dealt with according to its regulations. 2013 was a hectic year for parents with small children. It sure was. The year started with mums and dads scouring shops for baby milk powder, depleted by mainland demands. The government had to impose an export quota. End of summer, parents queued up for kindergarten places in competition with mainlanders again. They accused the government of not backing up its policies with sufficient resources. In early October, hundreds of parents queued at kindergartens in North District to get application forms. Many had kids living across the border. One kindergarten saw over a thousand queue for 90 places. Education Secretary Eddie Ng insists there are enough kindergarten places and went to Sheng Shui to see for himself. The 
淨係北區其實係唔夠嘅，安排咗五間咯喎。佢有冇落過嚟去睇下個民情呢？ About 300 parents demonstrated in Fan Leng to fight for priority for local kids in the district's kindergartens. The Education Bureau met with schools in North District and Tai Po. They agreed on priority for neighborhood kids, a unified registration day, and a one-child, one-place measure to prevent parents from hoarding placements. How difficult is it to buy a can of baby milk powder? 由觀塘買到出嚟旺角都話買唔到，對我哋香港啲 B B 好唔公平咯。咁啊，因為我見到好多人一早咧都排曬隊噶啦，咁我哋去買咧已經冇噶咯。On the contrary, at the Shangshui train station, grey goods traders were seen repacking several cartons of milk powder before going through customs. In March, the government amended trade laws to prohibit anyone over 16 from taking more than two cans of baby milk formula out of Hong Kong. 政府有介入咧，係不得已嘅情況，令到水貨客佢嗰個成本大大增加，同埋能夠將大量嘅呢啲配方奶粉誒帶嚟香港嘅能力咧，係減低。Before and after the Golden Week, the government tested milk powder supply and decided not to lift the two-can limit.